In my last video, somebody asked me, how do I set up my YouTube videos? So being the gentleman I am, I'm not going to just show you how I set up my entire YouTube studio. I'm going to show you my entire process from idea to execution. I'll show you how I find ideas and inspiration for my videos, when and how I script my videos, my entire YouTube setup, including my camera, my lighting and audio. Plus, I give you a sneak peek into my editing process. Do not blink because I promise this video is going to be absolute gold from start to finish. Let me know in the comments below how you shoot your YouTube videos. So let's start with the idea. As you can tell from my really low subscriber count, I've only recently started taking YouTube seriously. I'm a video editor full time and I used to use this channel to host random tutorials and upload video ads I've made just to see what happens. That was until I uploaded a short video less than a minute long, how to make Hormozy cell reels in 60 seconds and that video absolutely blew up. Don't click away, I'll leave the video in the description if you want to check it out, but the point here is, this showed me the power of trending keywords. The reason a Hormozy video did so well is because it's a highly popular keyword, but at the time there wasn't a lot of competition. Now I use a tool called VidIQ so I can easily find keywords and phrases that have high volume but medium to low competition. Not only that, but VidIQ's headline generator and AI tools help me create more compelling headlines. If you have a YouTube channel, I highly recommend VidIQ. It's an incredible tool and I'll leave that linked in the description. But hang on, let's back up a second. One of the realizations I've had recently is that it's all in the headline and the thumbnail. If nobody clicks, you don't get views. If you don't get views, you don't grow. Take a look at my older videos and thumbnails. You can see how careless and boring they are. And since then, I've drafted in a designer who helps me make much better thumbnails and the click-through rate has increased and the views are increasing in turn. So we've got the big idea and the thumbnail and the headline sorted first. It's time to create the content. Let's talk about the scripting process. As for whether or not I create a script, it totally depends on the content. I have another channel, Ryan Collins Original, where I talk more about self-improvement and book reviews and things like that. And in those videos, I tend to create bullet points about what I want to talk about, just keep the notes handy, and then just riff off the points. If I feel like I can get more emotion through by freestyling, then I'll do it that way. The downside to this is that I run the risk of rambling and going off topic, and that means more editing afterwards. If I'm creating a tutorial where I screen capture and I know the process inside out then I'll talk through the process without a script and just show people rather than telling them with a script. Now if I want to be extremely concise in what I'm saying then I'll use a script. If I'm creating a short and trying to cut my instructions down to make the video as short as possible and accurate then I'll write a short script. I did this the Hormozy style ad and that is the one that blew up. If I do use a script I use a Parrot Padcaster teleprompter which sits directly on the lens of the camera in front of me. I copy the script into a Google Doc and then I use the Padcaster app and I can read this while looking at the lens. So to wrap up the scripting process if I want to review something or talk about something where I want to get more emotion and opinion across I'll just write down some bullet points and riff off those. If I want to be more concise with my delivery of the information I'm providing, then I'll write a script and I'll put the teleprompter on the DSLR. Drop a comment below what you think. Am I using a teleprompter for this video? I'll tell you at the end of the video. Now the video's together, we need the shot list. And the shot list is a new addition. I don't usually film a lot. I usually just rip B-roll from story blocks or pixels. But more recently, I'm picking up the camera more. And for this video, for example, I'll need shots to show off the various things I'm talking about. So for the shot list, I open up the raw footage and get a split screen with a Google document. I'll listen through the video I just made and I'll write down each shot in a sort of checkbox on the side as it comes to it in the video. Now the YouTube studio setup. So I'm going to run you through my entire setup. This is going to be broken up into three sections. So camera, lighting and audio. Everything I mention where possible will be linked in the description below the video. If you use those links to buy the products, you help me out at no extra cost to you. But first, let me tell you the biggest issue I have when it comes to consistently recording YouTube videos. So I live in a coach house, which is essentially two big rooms, a downstairs kitchen diner and an upstairs, which is a beautiful, huge loft or attic. It's an amazing room. I love living here, but I have two big problems. Problem number one is the lighting. Unless I'm shooting first thing in the morning or in the middle of the night, it's actually 1 a.m. here. The light is inconsistent and I can't block out the light with blackout blinds because I've got so many windows. I've got two sets of double doors. I've got four Velux on the roof and one of them doesn't have a blind. 
and then I've got another circle window in the back of the room. Not only that, but the light shoots in from all angles and it's a real nightmare to get the same look in every video. The second issue I have is there are no flat walls in this room. That means I can't decorate the background or even put up a screen. So I've got this setup behind me, but it means I really have to improvise and put all my studio out in the middle of the room, put my bed in the corner just out of shot. So I literally feel like I'm living in my YouTube studio and that is why I'm going to move soon so I can get a separate office, get some flat walls to decorate a blackout blind and I can have a consistent studio so I can just turn up, hit record and get rolling because the more stuff you have in the way of doing something, the longer it's going to take you to actually get it done. So anyway, there's my rant over. Let's get into how I actually shoot my videos. So my camera is a Canon 90D DSLR, shoot a full HD, 1080p. 25 frames a second, you would use 24 FPS in the US. I have the picture profile on cine style and I do a little color grade after. I like to color grade on my MacBook Pro because I get the most accurate colors and then I move that over to my PC for video editing. The lens I use is a 24mm pancake lens with an f2.8 aperture. I love this lens, it's incredibly sharp, gets a lovely background, it's really affordable lens. The only issue is the camera has to be a few feet away due to the crop factor turning 24mm into more like 38mm. I do have a Canon 10 to 18 f5.6 lens, but the, it's not very good in low light conditions. It's not as good quality. The next lens for me is really going to be the Sigma 18 to 35 f1.8. I really can't wait for this lens. I can move closer to the camera and I can still get that background blur. I had an amazing idea, guys. If you go and hit subscribe now, then maybe one day I can buy the lens. I've got a Niwa fluid head tripod I found on Amazon. I love this tripod because it's nice and sturdy and it allows me to get really smooth panning shots like you've been seeing throughout this video. For lighting, I have a Godox VL150 mounted on a C stand and I'm using an Aperture Light Dome 2 softbox. The VL150 is an absolute beast of a key light. I only really need it on 30 to 40% and it's comparable to the Aperture 120D except the Aperture will run you about £650 or 800 bucks, whereas the Godox VL150 is half of that, just as powerful. The Aperture Light Dome 2 is huge, provides a massive soft source of light, which can really help light your set. The reason I've got this one is because it's got a unique feature, which helps you set this up and take it down really quickly. And if you've ever tried setting up a light dome that doesn't have quick release features and you've been stuck inside it for 20 minutes, you'll understand how handy it is to have this extra function. That being said, this light dome is absolutely massive. So if you have a small space, you might want to opt for the Light Dome Mini 2, which does the same job, has the easy setup, but it's a lot smaller. Also, this big Light Dome 2 requires a heavy duty C stand, which was a few hundred bucks as well. And the Light Dome Mini will probably go on a normal stand. If I had to do it again in a smaller room, I'd go for the Godox SL6C, which is the baby version of the VR150 and a Light Dome Mini 2. I have another LED panel, which I use on a cheap basic tripod for fill light. I really love this LED panel by Ray Lino. It's very bright, versatile, has adjustable color temperature and brightness. And if you're traveling or in a pinch, this thing could operate as a key light on its own. I've used it as a key light in other videos and it's less than hundred bucks. So it's a really good little fill light there. The background lights are just strip lights I found on Amazon. Nothing amazing to report there, and I've got a lamp from Ikea. As for positioning, the key light is 45 degrees to the right and above me, and the other one is 45 degrees to the side of me here with a bit less brightness for the fill. So that's the lighting sorted, let's talk about audio. So I have tried a ton of microphones over the years, but I finally found the setup that works best for me. I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on a microphone stand, which is on a boom arm just out of shot. And this is a directional microphone, so I can aim it at my face. I get clear audio, and as a directional microphone, it doesn't pick up background noise. And what I like about this Plus version is that it automatically switches on and off with the camera, which the older version didn't, so you don't run out of batteries often, or even worse, record a whole video to find out the mic wasn't on. Been there way too many times. It's got high and low pass filters on the back, but I don't touch any of these settings. The only issue you'll run into here is you need an extension cable to run the wire to the camera and you need a little adapter. You'll also want a stand to mount this on. Don't worry, I'll leave the entire kit set up 
in the description so you can set up this boom arm just like I have it set up. In other situations where I'm recording a screen capture or even course modules where I'm mostly at the desk, I use a different microphone, which is absolutely incredible out of the box. It's one of my favorite microphones and that is the Shure MV7. If you don't mind having a microphone in the shop, this microphone is the one. Sounds incredible. It's the baby brother of the SM7B. It's plug and play USB microphone. Sounds so good out of the box. So that is the equipment so now the video is shot it's time to edit so here's how i do it first i drag in my raw footage into premiere pro i like to get my audio sounding great my video color graded before i do any cutting recently to get incredible audio i render the audio out from premiere pro as an mp3 and i upload that to adobe podcast enhance this free ai tool cleans up your audio makes it sound amazing in seconds i then take this mp3 drag it back into premiere pro replacing the original audio i'll hold shift click on the video and the new audio file right click and link and now all the cutting happens to the same track for color grading because i record in a cine style profile the color is already nice and flat i'll open up lumetri color choose a look and pick something that works with my setup i usually like the blue ice or the blue steel I honestly can't remember if these are like defaults Premiere Pro or I downloaded them from somewhere. So sorry about that, but I pick a LUT that I like. Now I just add a bit of contrast and there's not usually much more to do here. So now it's time for the rough cut of the video. So I'll work through and cut out the mistakes and the spaces. And like I said earlier, this is much easier when you've used a script but it can take a long time if I've been rambling. If you don't like cutting out long spaces, you can use another great tool called Time Vault and you just drag this footage in and it will automatically cut out the spaces for you. You can set the sensitivity to how much you wanna cut. This can be super time saving, but for some reason, because I like to make my life difficult, I still cut everything manually and still edit everything myself. But if you wanna check out Time Vault, I'll also leave that linked in the description below. When the audio sounds good, the color is right and the main A roll is all cut. Now I'll start by adding my titles to my videos. Here's a time saving tip for you. You can create one transitional title in After Effects, save the project and drag it straight into Premiere Pro. Now all you do is duplicate the composition in After Effects, swap out the title or swap out the word or the design and then you just drag that back in. So now all the titles are in place, I'll add in the music. If the video is long, I'll typically mix the music every 90 seconds or so, or every time the subject or the title changes, whichever one comes first, really. If you struggle to mix music, just keyframe it out over the last second and then start with the new track. I generally have the music around minus 20 dB and my overall volume hitting around minus 6 dB. Really, you shouldn't notice too much music if somebody is talking. It can be quite distracting. I get all my music from Soundstripe and I've used them for years. Highly recommend if you want reusable royalty free music for your videos. Lots of great tracks you can search by genre, type of music and energy and everything like that. I'll leave a referral link for Soundstripe in the description if you want to check them out. Now when the foundations of the video are in place, I'll go through and I'll add the B-roll. So like I said, I never used to film much. I would rely on stock footage and graphics thinking it saves time, but I'm starting to be less lazy and get involved with the camera more. So I'll go through adding my B-roll at the end. Finally, I'll watch back through the video and I'll add effects and transitions to keep it moving, but I'm careful not to add too much to distract from the video. If you wanna to learn to be a full-time video editor or get freelance clients, why not check out my course on Skillshare? I should literally charge loads of money for these. You can get an annual subscription for Skillshare for like a hundred dollars maybe you check out my social media masterclass or my premiere pro courses or the fiverr course which helped one of my students quit their job if you want to see more from me obviously subscribe it's been a pleasure thanks for watching the video my name is ryan this is ryan collins video hope you got your answer love you thank you and i'll see you in the next one peace